With the Isle Weaver update, we have a brand new Warframe and weapons to acquire. I'll be diving into more detail on how those function in the future, but today, the focus is on actually getting them. How long does it take to farm Araxia, a second copy for the Helmet, and the weapons? I'm Nick Engineer, and let's have a practical problem. Have you ever wondered how these calculations are done? Or perhaps you want to support the channel and see more behind the scenes? Join now on Patreon with the link in the video description. Farming Araxia is exclusively done from the new Isle Weaver node for Duvuri, and requires you to have completed the Hex quest. For the first few weeks from release, there is an event going on with additional rewards, but the node won't be departing when the event does. Only Dominus Strikes in your Dormer Zone shall move along, leaving you to speak to Acrithis as the permanent vendor for Isle Weaver rewards. The Isle Weaver loop is pretty simple. Grab a loadout from the selection provided, just like with normal Daviri. Engage with the objectives one by one, just like a normal Lone Story run, albeit with murmur enemies opposing you. One of those stages will have you face off against a hostile Araxia Warframe, who thankfully can't go invisible, but does have multiple stages to fight instead. Shooting a spider until it's dead works well enough, and otherwise just stay away from anything it produces. Notably, the Death Scuttler and Hanging Spiders should be avoided as a high priority, or it'll disable your abilities and deal a lot of damage. Honestly, I find those more dangerous than Araxia herself in the fight. When you finish fighting Araxia, I strongly recommend you smash and loot all the crates in the corridor leading out of her lair. These crates are tightly packed for easy looting and provide a substantial number of the resources needed to build our Weaver items. Completing the whole spiral will award Scuttler Husks, has a chance to award an Araxia Blueprint or Weapon Blueprint, alongside other separate rewards like Dominus Aureus during the event. There's no duplicate protection, which means you could theoretically get Temporal Dust every time instead of Araxia Blueprints. Scuttler Husks are the Isle Weaver shop currency that could be used to pick up blueprints you didn't get from drops, as well as the shop exclusive blueprint for the Talus Incarnan Heavy Scythe. If you're on Isle Weaver on normal mode, you acquire 16 to 20 husks. If it's Steel Path, you get 20 to 24 husks. No boosters or modifiers of any kind can increase those rates. As the husks aren't used to build anything, only as a currency, you can safely purchase any blueprints you want once you have enough husks to cover everything you've yet to acquire. Do note that if you are running on Steel Path, farming for more than just Araxia, or at least you want a second copy for the Helminth, you will need to use the shop to be done as fast as possible. Part of that is the particularly generous rates. A Steel Path runs minimum Scuttler Husk count is 20, which is exactly enough to buy an Araxia part blueprint, or more than enough to buy any one weapon part blueprint. Indeed, if you're farming on Steel Path for Araxia only, you are guaranteed to have enough husks to just buy the full set in six successful runs. It's impossible to not have enough by then, even if you roll the 11% chance of getting no Araxia parts this way. Depending on whether you want just Araxia, add on a Helmet copy, or go farm up everything, this graph breaks down how long it'll take, depending on if you run normal mode, which are the solid lines, or steel path mode, the dotted lines. For example, if you're farming just one copy of Araxia on normal mode, 50-50 odds you'll be done in 5 runs, definitely done in 8 runs. If you're farming a whole set of weapons and two copies of Araxia, then you've roughly 50-50 odds of being done in 13 runs of Steel Path or 15 runs of Normal Mode. Of all my simulations, only one in a million Normal Mode players took 25 runs to finish getting every blueprint. I imagine four such people will be in the comment section of this video by the end of the month. As for how that translates to time, I ran a few Steel Path runs solo, focused on getting through the spiral quickly while still looting the crates in the corridor. This aims for a balanced run, going at a decent speed while getting plenty of necker coils, obols, and temporal dust along the way. My slowest run was 23 minutes, fastest just under 18 minutes. Doing similar on stream, my longest run was about 30 minutes as a result of flying around and enjoying the scenery a bit. Taking run times at 20 to 25 minutes then, one's first full Araxia set can be done in a couple of hours typically. Going for a second set, push it up to 2.5 to 3 hours on Steel Path, or 3 to 4 hours on Normal Mode. Getting every blueprint, including double Araxia, you're looking at an average of 5 hours on Steel Path, 6 to 7 hours on Normal Mode. Slight downside, that's just the blueprints. 
If you've not done lots of Daviri, and specifically hunting for resources, you may be short a few pieces. Standout will likely be Tosoma Extract, as it only spawns in low quantities in caves. Acquiring those resources, if you don't already have them, can add a chunk of time. For Tosoma Extract in particular, I recommend min-maxing the harvest. Obtain Resource Booster if you can, to double your drops. Then, go to Daviri Full Experience, and use your Decree Reroll smartly to get the Double Drops from Plants Decree. With those acquired, head to caves while on your cave to use the loot radar for easy Tosoma foraging. The wiki is a helpful map on the Tosoma Extract page to quickly find viable caves. Doing that, allow me to pick up 48 Tosoma Extract in just under 10 minutes, most of that without the Plant Booster Decree. To cut a long spiral short, Araxia's farm is not all that different in length from a lot of modern Warframe releases. And yet, the diverse nature of the farm, rather than a single mission objective on repeat, made it go by really quickly for me. With regards to the event, Operation Eight Claw, Runs of Isleweaver will also grant you Dominus Aureus along the way. With a simple average of 20 per run on normal mode, or 24 per run on Steel Path, either option is perfectly valid for farming up that resource. There are a variety of rewards obtainable from Dominus Strikes in your Dormer Zone for these Aureus, and you really do not want to skip over them. Uncommon Arcanes can be purchased in sets of 7 for just 2 Aureus, with a limited 3 packs per Arcane, exactly enough to max it out. This means a 24 Aureus Steel Path run would allow you to buy 4 maxed Uncommon Arcanes immediately. Rare Arcanes cost twice as much at 4 Aureus per 7 Arcanes, meaning the average Steel Path run would pay out 2 maxed rares. The legendary arcanes, however, cost quite a bit more. Each of those packs grant three arcanes per pack, purchasable up to seven times for the full 21 required to max them. Each pack costs 22 Aureus, taking about eight normal mode runs or seven steel path runs to max out one legendary arcane. This is an incredibly fast rate of acquisition. Even if your steel path run takes 30 minutes, that's eight maxed uncommon arcanes or four maxed rares or six unranked legendaries in an hour. For comparison, someone running a full night of Eidolons, just under an hour, achieving 6 sets of Eidolon hunts would walk away with 18 arcanes. On average, there would be just 1 legendary arcane and 4 rare arcanes, with no way to pick which ones you'd get. So while Orexia's farm may be on the typical time for many new releases of Warframes, the rewards from Operation 8 Claw are astoundingly generous. That about covers it on farming this new node and event. As with most recent releases, the store option means no one will be stuck farming forever, so everyone can get their hands on all the new items in fair time. That's all from me for now, so as always, cut the weave, give Thrax reprieve, and fight well Tenno.